Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geek and Noise and welcome to the very first episode of Tech POV. Now, yes, I do look like a bit of a glass hole with this stuck to my head, but I wanted to bring you a bit of a different perspective on my tech videos. So around about once a week, you'll get a new episode of Tech POV where I'll be taking a look at a new piece of technology or perhaps the camera will follow me around all day. Who knows, you're gonna to have to tune in to find that out. But let's kick off this very first episode with a look at a brand new disc station from Synology. So here it is, this is the Synology disc station DS213J. Now, let's get this unboxed and we can see what we actually get included with the disc station. So we've got a little tab to pull down here. Nice carrying handle on the box as well. And we have got two, what looks like two main compartments really in these boxes. Now the first one is uh, the actual power cable. So we're in the UK, so we have got a three pin UK power cable and then on this end here, what's called an IEC connector. Now, if you're living in a different country, you're gonna get a different power cable to this one here. So that's the power cable out of the way. And then we've got some extra compartments in here. Let's take this main one out. This is where the actual disc station is. We just pop that to one side. And then we've got an accessory box. So let's pop the main box out of the way and have a look what we get inside the accessory box first of all. So here we go. The accessory box contains a welcome read this first quick installation guide. We've also got a disc here with the quick installation guide full users guide on here as well, plus a setup utility and data replicator three. Works with Windows XP onwards or Mac OS 10.5 onwards as well. We've also got an ethernet cable and we've also got the actual power adapter and this goes into the disc station, this end here and then this end here is where you plug in that mains power cable. And then the additional pieces we've got in here are some little screws. This is for closing the case, the outer casing. So three little screws there and then we've also got some uh, what look like hard drive mounting screws as well. So everything we need to get up and running. So let's pop those accessories to one side, get rid of that box there. And then we've got the Synology disc station itself. So everything packaged really nicely. And the actual disc station again is packaged very nicely indeed as well. And we'll just remove the tape. So we've got some tape on both ends. And then here it is. This is the Synology disc station. Wow, looks good. Now I've tested these disc stations before, so I'm very used to actually um, setting these up and, and giving you a guide around them. But for those of you who haven't seen these before, these are NAS devices, so network attached storage. And what you basically can do is you can install a couple of hard drives into the disk station and then you can store files on them and you can retrieve those files on Android devices, iOS devices or laptops or desktops. So all the computers that are linked to your home network or your small office network or business network, you can actually gain access to those files on the disk station. So this is a side profile view. And then round on the back, we've got a fan. We've got a couple of USB sockets, a reset switch input here for the power supply, Kensington lock, uh, and of course the ethernet socket to attach it to your network. Now if you attach that to a wireless router, you're then gonna be able to access your files wirelessly as well. And then round on the front, we've got some status lights. So we've got an overall status light here, LAN activity and disk one and disk two activity. And then we've got a power on off button on the front here as well. So let's open this up. Now it normally just sort of slides apart. Let's give you a view of this. It's like this. So this has come apart now. You can see 
These are the screw holes where you're gonna locate those screws a little bit later on, once you've got the hard drives installed. And then if I take this cover off on the side, you're gonna gain a view at the inside. So this is the fan located on the back. And then this is where you're gonna mount those hard drives. So we've got two hard drive mounting points, three and a half inch hard drives. Um, with an adapter, you could mount a two and a half inch as well. And then you've got the connectors in here. So there's no need for any additional cabling. Now I'm gonna show you what hard drives I'm gonna put in here. And then if you stay tuned for the second part of the video, then I will also show you how to actually set this up and get it up and running. So let's pop that just to the back there, like so. And these are the hard drives that I'm gonna be installing. These are Western Digital hard drives, three terabytes, and they're the new Western Digital red hard drives as well. So these are designed specifically for using in NAS devices. NASware it says on it here as well. Serial ATA 64 megabyte cache. And these are brand new models that Western Digital have literally just launched. And they should do the job nicely. So three terabytes, and I've got two of these to install. And very, very easy to install, or at least in theory they should be easy. So we're just gonna sort of slide this into place, like so. And then it should locate on that connector at the back, which it has. And then if we look through these side panels, we've got the uh, sort of holes already there in the side panels. And then we can actually put the screws in on the side. So let's grab these screws. Now this is the first tech POV video I've done. So I'm really hoping that you've got a good angle on uh, seeing what I'm doing here. Uh, I'll sort of keep adjusting the angle for you as well. So at least if I'm missing the shot sometimes, you will be able to at least catch up and see what I'm doing. So basically I'm just gonna install this first hard drive. So we're gonna put this through like so, and hopefully it will locate onto the hard drive, which it has. So this is the first screw going in, like so. And then we put the second one in. So this is just going through this sort of rubber grommet on the side, which is gonna dissipate some of the vibrations that the hard drive uh, makes and just give for a quieter operation. So that's those two done. Then we're just gonna turn this round like so. And then we're going to pop in the second screw or the second side, screw number three. And last but not least, screw number four. Now, when you've got two drives in here, you can set up different sorts of RAID. You can either have it striped for optimum performance, or on your second drive, you can have uh, data redundancy. So it'll back up the data that you've got on your first drive onto this second drive. And that's the option I want to use. I don't use these for uh, obtaining the absolute best performance. I use these so that I can store my video files, for example, on drive one, and then it creates a mirror image of that data on drive two. That's what I tend to go for. So we're just gonna locate this one onto the SATA connector just there and push it all the way home, like so. And then those holes on the side have lined up again which is a good thing. So we need four more screws. So they include 10 screws in total. So we've got at least two spare, which is really good. And then we're just gonna pop these screws in. It should be a little bit easier because the casing isn't gonna get in the way so much. So that's one screw and we go for screw number two and my microphone cable is getting in the way. So we just took that out of the way again. And we are on screw number two. Getting some weight to this now, now that the two hard drives are in here. So again, we're gonna put the last two screws in and then we can put the casing back in and then we can actually get this connected up to our ethernet switch, which is in another room. And then we'll be good to actually show you the setup procedure. So there we go, there's the two hard drives installed. And now 
we are going to pop this back on and it goes on like so and then pushes back into position so that is it in position and then on the back here we've got two additional screw holes just here and we're going to use the other screws these are the little case screws here that go into the plastic and we just need two of these so again we've got a spare one as well for if we did lose one so we're going to pop the first one in the top here like so that's that one secure and then we're going to pop the second one in just here and again that's that one secure so that's it that's the Synology disk station with the actual hard drives installed in it and now we're going to connect this to our network and uh, I'll show you how you set it up so this is probably an area you haven't really seen much in the Geekanoid studio uh, this is an area just outside the studio where I keep all of the NAS devices and our networking and um, yes it looks a bit of a mess but I put these up here so they don't disturb the audio whilst I'm recording because they've all got fans in so they do generate a little bit of noise I've got a Synology DS211 here a Western Digital network hard drive just here this is the new DS213J which we're just installing I've already connected it to the power then I've got my TP-Link switch this is where all of the, the networking connections happen and then I've got a DS411 Slim and then my Apple uh, time capsule just there and this is the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle which is the ethernet connection so I'm just going to pop that into a spare connection just there and then it's just a simple matter of powering the device on and you can see the LED light, lights come on here we've got LAN activity and these status lights have come on in various colours once the, the drive's actually set up this flashes while it's just uh, starting up and then it'll go as solid blue like this one once we're actually up and running so here we go I'm sitting at my desk ready to set up the Synology disk station I just installed and I need to start up a piece of software so I'm just going to start up my Synology assistant that's going to help me find the new Synology disk station on the network so so you get a better view of this I'm going to switch to screen capture now so now you've got a clearer view of the Synology Assistant software and this software is free you download it from the Synology website or install it off of one of their disks and this allows you to discover the various disk stations that are installed on your system now you saw in my storage area that you uh, had a little look at earlier in the video where I keep my NAS devices and that switch and I've got a DS211 installed there and also a DS411 Slim and then the DS213J, which is the model we're looking at today, is not installed. And that's because there is no software installed on it. There's no formatting done to the hard drives. So we can double click on this. And in our default browser, it opens up a web assistant. Gives you some details about your disk station, such as the model name, IP address, MAC address, the serial number, the version number, and also the fact that nothing is installed. So we're going to click on this right arrow and it's telling us we can install Disk Station Manager from my computer or installation disk. Well, I haven't got a computer with a disk drive. I'm installing this on a Mac Mini and I haven't got the DSM file on my computer yet. So I'm going to open up a new tab and go on over to the Synology website at synology.com. Now I've got to look for the DS213J software. So I'm going to go across to support and to download center and then I've got a two bay NAS so I select this and then I'm going to select the 213J and this shows me what software is available for this particular disk station and there is plenty including the Synology Assistant we're using now, Cloud Station, also Evidence Integrity Authenticator, Photo Station as well if we scroll all the way back up to the top you can see that disk station manager which is device de independent it's not a windows file or a mac file it's for the actual disk station itself is available for download so we're going to click on europe and download this file and we just close this tab down 
and you can see it going into my downloads queue just here at the bottom there we go it's completed and we're going to choose the file now and it's just here here's the file that we're looking for dsm ds213j3211 and we choose that and now we can click on the right arrow again and it's telling us we can create a, an admin account for the disk station and we're going to just type that in hopefully we've got that right on both counts and then we can give the server a name so we're going to actually call this uh, geek ds213j and we've got an option here of creating the Synology hybrid RAID system which is what I use on all of my Synologies and this is the recommended choice we can uh, opt not to do that at this stage and we can change that at a later stage as well and then we're going to click install now and it's just asking you to clarify that you understand that the data on the two hard drives that I installed will actually be removed so they're going to be absolutely wiped so if you're setting this up on hard drives you've used previously and you do want that data do not click OK get a backup of that data first so we're going to click on OK and this is going to initialize the disks format the system partitions install the disk station manager software and once this is complete I'll be right back with you for a look at what else we can do with the Synology disk station so the initial installation has now complete it took around about four to five minutes to complete that installation and we're now presented with a login screen so we're going to log in with our admin privileges and once we're logged in we will be presented with the disk station manager software and it normally starts up with a wizard as well to guide us through the sort of initial features of the disk station so it's telling us that the uh, DSM is creating a volume would you like to check the status now well, let's click yes and see how things are going along and it's actually preparing the uh, raid on the two three terabyte drives and you can see here it's uh, done a pretty quick job actually it's already at over 40 percent of creating that file system now whilst that is completing I do, will just uh, close that down oh no let's just drag it off to one side let's just drag it down here and we have a little look at the uh, DSM quick start wizard so if we click start this just shows you some of the actual features that are available it's uh, telling us to go into storage manager first of all um, and this will allow us to create various shares uh, let's click right and you can see here file sharing so we can open the shared folder setup page so if we click this it opens up over the top of the uh, wizard and in here we can actually create various shared folders we we'll come back to that in a short while and then if we click right again it tells us to about accessing files so file station allows us to store and access files on the disk station via a web-based interface uh, to access and manage files go to install DS file on your mobile devices so we can actually install a DS file application on perhaps our iPad and that allows us to access the files stored on the disk station hard drives as well we click right again we've got package center now package center allows us to actually enhance the disk stations functions and install multimedia or mobile apps so if we click here it actually opens up the package center and we say yes we've read the terms of service we obviously haven't um, we can explore all of the various applications that are available and this is where the Synology stands head and shoulders above the competition the fact that we've got various applications that we can download and install we've got things like antivirus essential asterisk audio station a directory server DHCP server cloud station DNS server docu wiki not sure what that one is download station is really good this allows you to set a download going on the disk station and then you can switch off your computer and the disk station will complete the download we've also got Drupal DVB link server Glacier backup uh, the, the list goes on and on we've got OS ticket PHP my admin photo station I did actually skip some here as well uh, we've got iTunes server high drive backup uh, GLPI I'm not going to go over all of them we can even install WordPress 
onto the Synology disk station as well. And all of these enable you to run the apps on the disk station uh, independently of your computer. So once they're installed and configured and up and running, as long as your disk station is on, it will enable you to use these apps. So let's uh, close this one down and go back to this guide. So we've also got a cloud service as well. We can sync files automatically uh, between your disk station computers and mobile devices and it allows you to access and retrieve those files on these different devices using DS Cloud. Very very good service and again an added value to this particular uh, device. And then we've got Easy Internet which allows you to access your disk station over the internet by configuring our network settings and port forwarding etc firewall and DDNS services. Uh, and you can see here a little graphic and again it highlights the icon so you can actually access that feature and enable it if you so wish and then we can close down the quick start guide uh, do you want to show this wizard at next login no we don't and then we can pull this back into view see how it's getting along actually creating the file system we're 87 percent here or complete i should say and um, it's going along at a good speed so we let that complete and then we can see here system health on this panel on the side here and this shows us that volume one is being created uh, it's been turned on for just over 10 minutes we can also see the resource monitor here this shows how much of the cpu is being used currently at 55 percent how much of the installed ram is being used 31 percent and again i should have really told you about this during the unboxing but the synology disk station is uh not just a case for a hard drive it actually contains a processor and memory as well now while this is completing creating I'm going to go back over to this Synology website and get up the product page for the DS213J and you'll see that it is actually a very very capable system so if we go to specifications here, you can see it has a 1.2 gigahertz CPU in here. And it's also got dedicated memory. It's got 512 megabytes of DDR3 RAM. So a very, very fully fledged and capable system. And the fact that it's got a dedicated processor means it operates at a nice fast speed as well. So you, you must take my word for this. It is not just a hard drive enclosure. This has got processing power as well. Now also you'll note down here by the supported RAID types we've got Synology Hybrid RAID which is what I'm setting it up as we've also got BASIC also a JBOD which means if I'd set it up as JBOD we would have had 6 terabytes or just under 6 terabytes of storage but no data redundancy and then we've got RAID 0 and RAID 1 as well so let's close this tab down and we go back over and you can see it's actually completed creating the file system so it is complete basically volume one it still sits being created here but I would imagine that it is now complete and let's close this down and see if it allows us to create our first share now I'm just going to show you around some of the rest of the interface on this top panel here we've got access to various features such as control panel the package center that I showed you earlier file station storage manager etc and we've also got access to these via these shortcut icons as well so we're, we're going via this top menu here and look at file station so in file station it's telling us that there is no shared folder available so you have to actually create a shared folder to enable you to store files on this so let's create a shared folder so we click on create we're going to give it a name so let's call this photos so we're going to store our photos on here uh, storage of uh, let's just call it family photos for argument's sake and we're going to not hide it we're not going to enable a recycle bin we're not going to hide the folders and files from users at this stage and we're not going to encrypt it although we could encrypt it with a key we could do that but for now we're not going to so we're going to create that particular share and we're going to say that guests can read only admin can read and write and then we're going to click on OK 
and that is that share actually created and then we can actually mount that on our desktop for easy access and store our photos in this shared folder as simple as that creating a share and then you can see here on file station we have now got access to the photos folder so that's it for this unboxing set up and first look i hope you enjoyed the new uh, tech pov uh, episode and the new uh, field of view created by the gopro camera in the first section of this video and also hope you take a look at a disk station for yourself uh, i'm a big believer in the synology range of disk stations i've used them for a long long time now uh, throughout my years of using them i think i've had one hard drive fail which wasn't the Synology's fault hard drives fail all the time the fact that I had it set up in a RAID configuration with data redundancy meant that I, all I had to do is buy a brand new hard drive pop it back in where the failed one was and it rebuilt the uh, RAID and I lost no data at all so very very valuable way of storing the data thanks very much for watching join me next time for another Tech POV. Thank you.